Get your popcorn ready for the College Baseball Insider Show with Matt Grissom and Quentin Mills, giving you all the insights and analysis you need for the weekend slate that college baseball has to offer. Oh, no! Battles deep into the day! Has left the stadium entirely! Now, here are your hosts, ready to dive into the top matchups. What is up, college baseball fans? This is episode four, covering week nine of college baseball. I am Matt Grissom, joined by Quentin. What's up, Q? What's up, Matt? Another day. I'm struggling as I just watched Miami take one from UNC. That's not a good way to start off the quote-unquote weekend matchups, but we're going to bounce back. I split nine and nine last weekend. I, I got to get better than that. And you started, what, one and one this week with LSU coming home? Uh, yep, <clears throat> LSU coming home. I still have uh, Texas A&M, so if they can pull it through, I'm going to have another 500 day, two and two. So, <laughs> that's my luck. Well, number. covering the uh, week eight matchups, you did better than I did with these uh, series preview or predictions here. Boston College, let's, let's hammer them a little bit because we were so high on the Eagles. You know, they broke into the top 25, had a real chance to to make us see something. And as they traveled to Louisville, just didn't show up. No, and, and, and I told you and Johnny VTV this, I don't think that was a display of uh, Louisville being dominant. I think that was just a what we saw BC was just implode, um, especially with Chris Flynn blowing an 8 nothing lead in the second. I mean, that was just gut-wrenching to watch. I had my TV four screened, and and I'm glad the kid was in bed because uh, dad said some not nice things that probably shouldn't have been repeated. But eh, I think they'll bounce back. I mean, they're still a good team. I don't know. I, I think that answer, uh, showed us a lot of um, a lot of issues with them uh, on the pitching side of things. He had a bad start, but they couldn't rebound it. Um, I, I don't know how far they're going to go, but that that just was not a good look. Yeah, and then college baseball fans were robbed of a game three between LSU and South Carolina. I was really looking to see the Tigers bounce back and take that game three. And I guess the weather just pushed it, and I don't know why they're not going to make the game up. I guess it really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. But they split that series one and one after South Carolina really dominated both games. But that game two, LSU, they showed that offense – can hang with the best of them, and and came back. I think they won that game, what, 9-8 or something like that. But it's a great series. I mean, South Carolina, man, Ethan Petrie, the the freshman, hitting that grand uh, – not a grand slam, but the home run off Paul Skeens, I think it was the first one he had given up all year Thanks. long. Yeah. <clears throat> man, the Gamecocks showed that they're, they're legitimate this year. Yeah, I would say um, the two – extremely fast trajectory teams, Kentucky and South Carolina. I think we saw Kentucky is, is maybe, I'm not going to say a pretender, but I think they're just kind of coming back down to a pace. That's more realistic. Uh, South Carolina is still on the rise, even though it's a split series. Like you said, they dominated out of 18 innings. They probably dominated 15 of them. Um, I think they actually were fortunate not to play that double header. I think LSU had the momentum. I think if it would have played Sunday, South Carolina would have had the momentum, but overall, uh, LSU's got to love the ability to come back and not be, you know, frazzled per se. Uh, but South Carolina's got to also take a, a win out of that as playing the number one team in the country as tough as anybody could uh, to date. So that that was a win, in, in my opinion, for both teams. So let's let's jump down and talk about the Kentucky Wildcats. Good call on that. Georgia was just too much to handle and Kentucky kind of got put back in their place. And I'm I'm with you. They're not overrated, but they also showed that they're they've just not hit the meat of the SEC schedule yet. And we're we're maybe flying a little too high. Yeah, like I said, I, I'm not counting them out. I don't like I said earlier, I don't think they're a pretender. I just think when you have a trajectory that high <laughs> from one year to the other, it's just very unrealistic in college baseball that it just clicks 
uh, so perfectly um, without the talent that maybe an LSU, a Florida, a Tennessee, a Vanderbilt has. Um, they're they're getting better, and it's great for the SEC. It's great for college baseball, but this is going to be a little more realistic pace for them. They're going to get better over the next two to three years, not two to three weeks. That's just not sustainable, uh, especially in powerhouse baseball conferences like that. Right, and I think you're seeing that. I mean, LSU tonight was a smash play against Kentucky, and, you know, I bet on Paul Skeens, but this was more of a bet against Kentucky than anything else. I mean, I, LSU minus 220, I think you got it at minus 235. That's just too cheap of a price for LSU. You Kentucky didn't have a match in this. I mean, and you saw it evident with the score. I mean, they just can't hang with the big boys of the SEC. Yeah, and then catching uh, Paul Skeens off a, a loss and a pretty shelling loss at that didn't bode well for them. Uh, their their best interest was to have him have a, a phenomenal start and maybe regress a little bit, but you knew he was coming in there focused. He was in a rebound spot, and he definitely took advantage of it, and uh, he took his frustrations out on the Kentucky Wildcats tonight. And if you're Kentucky, I mean, don't hang your head on it. You just faced, you know, one of the top three pitchers in all of college baseball, so – you know, there's nothing really you can do. You can uh, move forward to tomorrow and try to steal a game. I mean, that's all you can do. Yeah, talking about a team that bounced back, you had my Arkansas Razorbacks. They did drop one yeah. to Ole Miss, but here we are again taking another series after a, a 2-1 win, just like Alabama. And, you know, I this team worries me, but at the end of the day, you've got to trust Van Horn. He's going to get it figured out. And they, they showed up and beat the defending champs, which we know Ole Miss is not what they are last year. And, you know, it, we'll see how they end up with the season. But I'm just glad that we didn't drop that one down in Oxford. Yeah, that would have been tough. I don't think Ole Miss is going to lose every series. Uh, fortunately, they lost to Arkansas. Um, it was a tough week betting. Arkansas was kind of stressful. Another another team that I mentioned, you know, Texas Tech was stressful. They dropped a the game they shouldn't have. I mean, realistically, Arkansas probably should have swept Ole Miss. It didn't happen. Cost us some money. Texas Tech should have <clears throat> swept the sorry North Dakota State team. It didn't happen. Uh, in my opinion, Oklahoma State, you know, shouldn't have dropped uh, their game. So, it, it was just a tough overall thing. I know, obviously, I do a show with a, a Razorback diehard and um, – I, I, we've done pretty well on the Florida, Arkansas, Wake Forest auto bet parlay on a personal level as well as what we posted. So I, I did cast on that, but um, I'll say, man, Arkansas is scrap, and I think they got to hold their heads high. They've got some injuries. They still don't have the best closer, in my opinion, in the game. They're going to get better with him. You know, Brady Slavens is finally starting to turn it on. He's starting to hit the ball really well. Uh, and it's at a pivotal time because they just kind of lost Jared Wegner, their their most consistent hitter, to a finger fracture. Uh, he should be back by the playoffs. But I tell you, man, fingers are tedious. He's, you got to be careful with those. They could break as easy as it heals. Um, so you really need Brady Stav Slavens and guys like Peyton Stovall to really step up right now and just lead this team so they can get healthy and they can make a deep run. I think they can. I really do. I, I Last week I still got Arkansas at 14-1. to 1. I still think there's value. Um, I think with the injuries, they're an outside in, uh, outside looking in team right now. But if they get healthy, they're right there. I mean, they could be a top three team, in my opinion, for a College World Series run. Yeah, and we'll get into some future bets. I appreciate all of our listeners. They've been reaching out through DMs on Twitter and messages. I had somebody ask me today about an 18 to 1 price on Arkansas. And, you know, I'm, for whatever reason, I'm hesitant on betting on the Razorbacks for the future market it's and i i don't know really know why because i probably I, i'm harder on them than you are so if you think that they're still a good value i know DraftKings has them at 15 to 1 right now i should probably just hop on them just in case but uh let's move on to your florida gators nice call they did yeah. take the series against tennessee and now i've got to face tennessee we've got to face tennessee this weekend but We'll get into that in a little bit. Let's talk about the Florida Gators, man. They're rolling right now. They are. I will say this: they're they're a health. They're they're definitely healthier <clears throat> than Arkansas, which I think helps them in that series. Um, they could hit, man. I mean, they just hit Chase Dallander like it was nothing. They just hit uh, the number one from last year, Chase Burns, like it was nothing. 
those guys, we've talked about it in multiple shows now. There is a slight regression, but they're still elite. You know, they're going to smoke anybody else. Uh, but when you run into those teams like Arkansas, uh, Florida, LSU, like those guys hit the ball hard. Even their outs are hard hit balls, but those teams can put them over the fence. They can hit the gaps. They can hit those hard balls that get through on a ground ball. Um, and Florida's one of it. And this is, I, I wouldn't even say this is biased. This is a, more objective, but, you know, Johnny obviously knows baseball. He's kind of uh, a little further down on Florida than than I am. And I think you're a little higher on Florida uh, than he is. Um, their bullpen is actually starting to figure things out. I know he's kind of saying that's their Achilles heel. And if I had to pick one, I would say that's what it is. But it's getting stronger. I mean, Philip Abner is one of the nastiest middle relief guys, kind of a setup man. He's really found himself. He's feeling great. Um, their closer, Neely, Brandon Neely, he leads the SEC in saves. So he's, he's leading the SEC and, and, you know, which is the, the, the most dominant college baseball conference there is. That's nothing to scoff at. The kid's throwing a slider like it's nothing. Uh, he throws mid nineties. They're, they're getting good right now. I would actually say right now their Achilles, the, the strongest Achilles here was their Sunday. Um, Jack Tawney, I mean, he's killing it. I believe he's second right now in the, in the home run race. The problem is, is in SEC play, he's not pitching up the par. Uh, that's that's really kind of amplifying the Pierce Capala injury right now. I think the best move is to maybe move him back a start. Um, it sounds like Sully's going to give him the Georgia opportunity to try to kind of get in a groove. But if he can't find it versus Georgia, I think you got to pull him and put him in the pen for a little bit, take the stress off of him. Because um, guys got to remember, he had Tommy John last year, so – or the year before. So he hasn't pitched in, in college except for this year. But Florida's bullpen's getting good. I think they're getting more dangerous than people realize. <clears throat> well, moving on, Stanford, that was the easiest selection, I think, on the board with the series prediction over Cal. They get the sweep against the Bears, and Stanford looks, again, like the, the team to beat in the Pac-12. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, I, uh, I really don't <clears> – <throat> I know it's Stanford. I know they're eight in the country. I'm not buying them, man. I'm not buying the Pac-12. You've been on it. I'm, I'm right there with you on the bandwagon. Uh, you know, we have a Pac-12 matchup uh, that we do have to pick somebody, whether it's Oregon or Stanford for the card. But Pac-12 against any other conference right now, I'm very hesitant to choose that side. And, and I think they're going to get out of the Pac-12 with the ease. The problem is, is – it's not good baseball. I think they're going to run into problems when they start facing other teams and play off ball. I really do. Yeah, and we'll get into that matchup too. But they had a midweek that I put on the card against Texas Tech because I think it is important to cover. Texas Tech, they split the series of that little two-game midweek. But that pretty much shows you. I mean, you've got a middle-of-the-road Big 12 team versus sp supposedly the elite Pac-12 team. And – you know, they split it. So let, let's fast forward and put Stanford, let's just say, in a super regional. This team isn't probably beating UConn like they did last year. I mean, they, they just don't have, for whatever reason, you know, they've still got the bats, but it's just not a, it, it's just not the same Stanford team. There's no Alex Williams this year, and that's going to be a problem. When Quinn yep. When you have Matthews as your Saturday <clears throat> starter and you had Alex Williams as your Friday, it's a lot easier to navigate a, a playoff run when you only have one guy that's really uh, thrown off the charts. I mean, the other guy's got to play perfect baseball, and again, it's just not sustainable. And I think they're going to find that out. I, I, I don't think Stanford's even going to make the College World Series, if I'm being honest. Well, let's stay in the Pac-12, wrapping up this series prediction. We've got another one, Oregon, Oregon State. This was one that we were opposites on. The Beavers showed up and showed out, and Eugene taking the series against the Ducks. And that was more of just a play against Oregon. I mean, I, Oregon State isn't anything to write home about this year, but I think in the rivalry, they are the more elite baseball program right now. Yeah, I mean, that was more for show purposes to try to just have a little fun competition. I really didn't have a side that I liked. I actually bet um, Oregon State – both games that they won. So that was nice to kind of uh, watch that out. I, I think Oregon's decent. Um, I don't think they're at the Stanford level, if I had to say, you know, Pac-12 baseball. Oregon State, I think, starting to find a, a groove at the right time. You always allude to 
you know, teams that start off cold and work their way hot towards the playoffs is kind of where you want to be or you want to start hot, fade off, and then kind of go back up at the right time. And right now is where you kind of got to kick it into that gear. You're getting into uh, late, mid to late April baseball. The playoff, you know, your conference tournaments are mid-May, so you got a month to figure it out. Um, and in the past 15 years, I mean, college baseball has kind of run through Corvallis uh, to get to the College World Series. And I'll be honest, there's always that team that really shouldn't be there that is. I, I would not disagree with somebody or not totally disagree with somebody that Oregon State doesn't have an outside chance here. I mean, their they're pitching still there. They, they lack some hitting, but they're a team with experience, and experience goes a long way. So just keep an eye on them to be one of those maybe Notre Dame teams of last year. Yeah, and wrapping up the recap, we've got Miami – uh, versus Virginia, and once again, that was an easy one to pick as the Virginia Cavaliers swept Miami and probably the most dominating of the top 25 series last week ended up, I think, knocking Miami out of the top 25 altogether. Yeah, they uh, – obviously, I went to the Saturday game. It was, a, it was a solid game. Uh, one of the questions we had was why wasn't uh, Carson Lagone pitching – it sounds like he has an elbow issue that they're trying to be a little cautious about. Um, Greg Zeal looked like he got the uh, – he didn't get the win today, but he had a better start. He's not the Friday guy. He loses – I think he's two and three on Fridays now, or, or game ones, I should say. Um, he's not as comfortable on the mound. Rosario is very hit or miss. UVA's like top three team hitting in the country. They can just beat you up with singles, doubles, and then Jake Geloff clearing the bases with a home run. Uh, shout out to him real quick. He's the all-time leading home run hitter now. Uh, he just hit his 38th home run. So congrats to him the other day. It's a big accomplishment. They're the team. We, we were going back and forth um, yesterday on Twitter with some people. If I had to pick a number seven team, I think I would put them kind of on the front porch of the house outside looking in right now. They have a complete team in a sense of they play team baseball and they all hit. I mean, they've got Kyle Teal batting 450. The only other guy better than him right now is Dylan Cruz, uh, which we all know. Uh, but they have a veteran leadership from uh, from their manager, O'Connor. Then they have Kyle Teal, probably a top 10 pick in the draft as a catcher, who just is so smart in the game. And then Jake Geloff. Um, solid pitching, not elite, but they won a College World Series in 2015 with the same recipe. You just can't ever count the uh, the Cavaliers out, and I and if I'm not saying they have a real shot at winning, but that's probably my number seven team if I had to name one. So let's jump into that. The futures question that we had from a viewer: <clears throat> Your contenders, who would you bet on right now in the futures market? Is Virginia at twenty to one? Is that a play for you? Why not? I mean, we've seen. We've seen teams of their caliber. I mean, you look at the Rice, you look at um, Fresno State. I mean, you look at UVA back-to-back -back years in 14 and 15. They're not going to recruit like LSU and Florida and Arkansas, but they play really good team baseball. They got one of the best managers in all of college baseball. I don't think you really can ever rule them out. They've been to the College World Series two out of the last three years. Uh, they know how what it takes to win. Um, I, I think – we always joke on notebook wager and we call it pizza money. It's the money you'd order a pizza with on a Friday night. It doesn't hurt to throw 25 bucks on them at 20 to one. I mean, that's a, I'll take that payout any day. Uh, realistically though, my money, I've already put three futures. I've got Arkansas, um, when the condition that they get healthy, Brady Tiger <clears throat> comes into, uh, you know, his form, uh, right before the playoffs, uh, they get healthy and, and they, they run the table, Finally, for Van Horn, he gets that title. Um, Florida, I've already got, and and I think you're just dumb if you don't even put ten dollars on Wake Forest at ten to one to win a hundred. I, I think you just have to. They're they're the most complete team, in my opinion. Does the most complete team always win the World Series? No, but I think you're dumb if you don't put it on, and you're sitting there, and they win it, and you go, "Man, I wish I'd have just listened to my gut." Yeah, I'm with you. I think Wake Forest right now is is still probably the best bet at 10-1. to 1. I feel like they should be around 7-1, to 1, maybe even 6-1. to 1. If you're looking at LSU, plus 400. Uh, Tennessee, it still baffles me that they're 10-1. to 1. But the one that I'm just really scratching my head over is Ole Miss, still 18-1. to 1. 
if if you're considering betting Ole Miss 18 to 1, save your money and put it on South Carolina or Virginia at 18 and 20 to 1. I mean, this that is just blatant uh, playing off last year's success. I mean, Ole Miss is not very good. They they could very well not even make the SEC tournament at the end of the year. The last two teams in the in the race get left out and don't get to go to Hoover. So I I think it's probably going to be Georgia and Mississippi State that ends up staying at home. But I mean, Ole Miss is is on that line, and for for whatever reason, the odds makers just still. I guess they're they're trying to pay back some debts from last year, but eighteen to one is an absolute joke for Ole Miss right now. Yeah, I don't see it. They're uh, they just like you said, they're they're not, on the verge of not even making the SEC tournament. I don't, I mean, I know they're kind of saying when we get Hunter Elliott back, it can change things. I, I just don't see it. I mean, they played perfect ball last year. They had this guy by the name of uh, Tim Elko who was incredible. I just don't. I don't see it. I mean, that was, like I said, that was a perfect season. Everything went their way. Um, not this year. I'm sorry. I hate to break it to you. If, if, if you played 18 to one, I uh, appreciate the donation, uh, courtesy of Las Vegas sports book and, uh, go ahead and move on. Start thinking the next season. Yep. All right. So diving into week nine, we did have two games or two series begin today and we're going to, Add something new here. We're going to bring in our play sheet here. You've got number 12, Kentucky, taking on number one, LSU. And if you were following us on Twitter, you saw that we both loved LSU in this matchup. Kentucky's just they, – they're not going to be able to contend with LSU in this series. No, I mean, it's just too dominant. Like I said, Kentucky's kind of coming back down to earth. Uh, now they've, they're 27-6 and six after tonight. I think they're going to be 27 and eight. I'll be honest. I don't even think they pick up a win here. Um, at least not Friday with Ty Floyd. I mean, the guy's one of the best number twos in the country. Write that off as a loss. We didn't get to see Christian little pitch uh, Sunday or game three Saturday, but uh, you know, he's kind of amped up. Maybe he's got a little more time to kind of relax now and really settle into that game three matchup. Now um, I, I just think LSU <laughs> was woken up by uh, by the South Carolina series. They're at home. It's going to get ugly. Yep, I agree. There's really nothing else to talk about there. I think LSU does yeah. get the sweep. Uh, we were a little bit opposite on this next one. Miami is taking on number 13, North Carolina. I know you backed the Tar Heels here. If I would have bet it, I was going to side with Miami. I just felt like they had to rebound if they're going to continue this push and, and be competitive in the ACC. And North Carolina is just one of those sleepy teams that I just feel like they do just enough to, to get wins, but they're not entertaining. And I think Miami has a little bit better firepower to contend with them, but uh, that one was a, a, that was a stay away from me tonight. I didn't want to bet against you, but, North Carolina just wasn't the right side here. No, this was a uh, – I expressed my concerns with Max Carlson. His numbers aren't uh, good. I'm, I'm rolling back with uh, Connor Bovert tomorrow. He, uh, he's way better than Rosario. I watched Rosario pitch against UVA. The guy just has control issues. He can't, he can't throw two strikes in a row. I mean, God, if I counted, he probably went 15 batters to a full count or at least three balls. Um tonight's play was more of a fade on gauge zeal he's not comfortable as the game one starter that's why he got moved to uh to game two up until carson lagoon got hurt you know what you win some you lose some he punched me in the mouth today and i had no answer for it um unc is not a good hitting team we talked about that off the air right before we started the show they bat like like right around 280 as a team. That that's something outside of uh, game two that I probably will stay away from. Uh, again, it's a fade on Rosario, and I do like Bovair, so it's probably the only other game I'll go back to this in this series. But I'll tell you, man, at number 13, North Carolina should be grateful because I realistically think you could put Campbell or Coastal ahead of them and justify it, in my opinion. Yep, I agree, and I'm with you. I like Connor Bovair. I think they do pick up game two, but I think ultimately they're going to lose the series. Looking at Alejandro Torres' 
stat line there, 3-0 and with 3-1-8 ER. Uh, but that Sierra at 171, he, he's got some good stuff. So I like Miami to end up taking this series. Uh, rolling on, staying in the Hold ACC. Oh. One, um, one thing to note, Torres did pitch tonight. Oh, he did? He did pitch tonight. He came in uh, before uh, Andrew Walters. So I don't know if that's going to change that or anything like that. Um, I don't know. I know when I was at UVA, he did come in. Uh, for an inning Saturday, and then he started Sunday. So the guy can obviously pitch on short notice. Uh, it's just something to look forward to um, and to watch out for. See, that's why I have you, Q. That's You're it. just keeping me in line, man. All right, so staying in the ACC, we've got my favorite team to win it all, Wake Forest. They're going to be tested in Louisville. I, I think the Cardinals showed last weekend that they are legit and – but it's not going to be a, an easy task at all. I mean, they have not faced a pitching matchup like this with Louder Sullivan and Hartle. I just think Wake Forest is going to be too much. But I can't see Louisville getting swept. So if you had to bet this, are you leaning with Carson Liggett to get the win on Sunday? I think you have to. This, again, like you just said, this isn't a sweep, in my opinion. And I looked at Wake Forest's schedule, and this is just – its I hate to say do theory, but it's true. Every season, I don't think there's ever been, to my knowledge, at least in my lifetime, a team to actually win every single series in the season. So you, you got to start looking at Wake Forest's schedule. So they play Louisville this week. Then they play at Pitt. Then they host Boston College at Florida State, and they host Virginia Tech. If I'm looking at those matchups and you have to tell me what series did they lose, I think it's Louisville. Louisville had a little rough spot. They bounced back. They beat a, a top 10 matchup in Boston College. Now, again, Boston College isn't Wake Forest's level, but it's a confidence booster. You now have back to back series <laughs> where you have that momentum outside of Carson Liggett. They have to be impressed to coming down from an 8 0 deficit to win the game. That fires teams up. Ryan Hawks, he's 5 1. He's got a 3 0 ERA. I'm not saying Red Louder is dropping game one, but Ryan Hawks isn't a bad pitcher to, to back if you had to. Um, if I had to say that Louisville wins, I think they win Friday, Sunday, and they lose um, when Greg Ferrone pitches. But I'll be honest, I'm not going to be surprised if Louisville takes two or three. It just is what it is. Tennessee couldn't do it last year with the same caliber team. So this is the matchup where I took Wake Forest, but it was a dicey pick. It was not easy. Yeah, I, I think Wake Forest ultimately wins the series. I, I just don't think they sweep them. I probably am going to have to back, back Liggett, but it just kind of depends on that number. Uh, I'm hoping that Wake is like minus 175 and you can get a, a good plus money price on Louisville, but we'll see. Uh, one, we don't really talk about a whole lot of mid-majors on this show, and We've got number 17, Coastal Carolina versus Old Dominion. I put this one on here because Coastal Carolina, that, that's kind of been a fun team to bet on here. They had a midweek series with Campbell, which they split. They lost the first game 9-4, to four, won the second game 5-3. to three. But Coastal Carolina is one of those teams that they can hit with the best of them. And looking at Old Dominion, they are a mirrored image of each other. I mean, this is going to be maybe the first team to score 15 runs wins it. Yeah, shout out to uh, ODU. My wife went there. She was a graduate. My, my father-in-law went there, so I'm sure they're going to make the coverage. Um, my wife jokes with me. She goes, oh, you're doing your, your stupid baseball podcast. Well, we're covering your team, so you got to take the stupid off of that part. Um, they're a good hitting team. I mean, we watched them play – UVA in the uh, in the super regionals or the regionals a couple years ago. They're they're a quality team. Whoever uh, I couldn't tell you the coach's name, but he's building something good there. They just don't have <coughs> pitching. Um, they haven't had pitching since uh, Verlander went there. I don't see that changing anytime soon. When you look at Coastal, I mean Coastal's played an incredible schedule, and they I mean they they beat Wake Forest right. They beat the best team in the country, in my opinion. Uh, you know they've played. Very tough teams. They, they play Georgia Southern, which is another good quality team. Um, they play Clemson. 
they, they got house, so that kind of woke them up. But when you look at their schedule, they have played tough teams. And when I look at ODU, the toughest team they played was UVA. Um, and, and they just – they couldn't do anything. I think they lost eight to two. I mean, Coastal Carolina just took two of three in a broken up series against Campbell, another mid-major powerhouse team. Texas State, another quality team. They beat UNC. Um, I, I just think even though Coastal's on the road – uh, they did get to ODU a couple days early, so it's not a turn and burn. It, it, they were able to kind of relax. I'm sure get some some time to uh, to hit the field, practice, and get comfortable. Um, uh, right now, Coastal Carolina, until they lose, I mean, you have to roll with them uh, just based off of of the uh, the eye tests and who they've played. I mean, they're, they've they've been up to the challenge. So, um, I'm taking Coastal. If 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 I can get a line on DraftKings, I, you're probably going to see them in the Uh, you're going to see them probably like one, 135 to 145 range. I, I would assume. Does that sound similar? Yeah. And I would, I would say I'm, I'm picking old dominion for the series predictions, but that is kind of backed up with, I just want to bet them. I think Sam Armstrong's probably their best pitcher that'll go Saturday. And if you look at their opponents, they struggle against good pitching teams and Coastal Carolina doesn't have pitching either. So I just – I feel like if we're going to get into a shootout, you might as well be on the team that's at home getting plus money. So that that's my whole thesis of why I'm, I'm betting Old Dominion here. And it, it's all going to be dependent on the number. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> so, okay, this is another one, South Carolina Vanderbilt, that it's all going to depend on the number for me. South Carolina, to me, is probably the second best team in the SEC. And I, you know, I'm putting them behind uh, Arkansas and Florida right now. But South Carolina travels to Nashville to take on number four, Vanderbilt, who has just absolutely turned it on. I'm not real sure uh, about the pitching rotation. I'm, I'm assuming that it is going to be Bryce Cunningham going again Friday with the injury to Carter, Holt, Carter Holton. Is that right? Yep. Uh, Will Sanders probably going to go Friday for South Carolina. I actually think that's confirmed as well as Jack Mahoney. And then James Hicks is who I saw on Twitter. Some random South Carolina fan said that it's probably going to be him that gets a start. Shout out Conway, Arkansas. And he's 6-0 and if he if he does get the start. He's 6-0 and in games that he's played. He's only started one other game. He has a 2-2-5 ER. But like a like I said, going back to it's all going to depend on the number. If you get either one of these teams at plus money, I feel like you've got to play them. But this is probably the most evenly matched series that we're going to cover. And if if you get one in a coin flip, take the plus money. I actually am going to lean towards Vanderbilt here. I think <laughs> this is where South Carolina just came on one of the most emotional series in probably about 10 years of that program's history, dating back to the Ray Tanner days. <laughs> um, Vanderbilt, they should have won that. They should have swept the series last week, right? I mean, they, they should have never dropped that mid-game to uh, Missouri. It is a little weird with the Carter Holton. They're very quiet about it. Uh, he had a little bit of arm discomfort. It seems now that he's missing potentially two uh, two series in a row. That, that could be a potential issue. That's something uh, I'm definitely going to have to try to investigate a little further. Uh, but Bryce Cunningham is one of the better pitchers in the SEC, uh, as well as Devin Futrell. I actually think uh, as emotional as last week was, South Carolina actually drops the series on the road. It, it's really hard to to bounce from LSU to then have to travel, um, you know, all the way to Vanderbilt, which is a powerhouse. You know, they're going to pack the stands. You got the Vandy Whistler whistling every freaking pitch. Um, it, it's it's. I think this is kind of one of those they kind of reset. Not to the Kentucky level. I think South Carolina is a little more legit. They got a better pitching staff. They can hit. But I think this is a series that they drop. I could see it. I mean, the SEC is a gauntlet. So, having to go on the road, you're probably going to lose series when it's a coin flip. Uh, just on the road, that's just the way it is. And, it like, like I keep hammering away, I – it just depends on the number. I feel like if you can get a good number, it's worth the bet to take the plus money price. <clears throat> Moving on 
to another evenly matched series, in my opinion. Basically, of all anything, I know we're we're down on Tennessee this year. Chase Dolander, surprisingly, is not going to start Friday night. Andrew Lindsay is going to get the start. He's 0-1 with a 201 ERA. Hunter Holland is the only announcement for Arkansas. Saturday, Sunday are both TBA for both these teams. I think the relationship between Tony Vitello and Dave Van Horn, you know, Vitello was on Dave Van Horn's coaching staff, and I've been told that he is the coach in waiting for Arkansas whenever Van Horn retires. Uh, they got into it. It became, I, I think it was a meme that spread like wildfire, but they're actually still really good friends. He said they, they had nothing, you know, no crosswords after that game. They met up and had a glass of red wine, hashed it all out. So this this should be a fun series, but I think they're just kind of messing with each other with the whole Saturday, Sunday, TBA. Tennessee's had the same three guys start I feel like every game for the last two years yeah we know probably who's going to be out there but judging by that you know the mind tricks or whatever if if we get Hunter Holland on Friday who has a good outing I think we can take game one Hagen Smith I'm still trying to figure out where his role is on this team what does Dave Van Horn want Hagen Smith to be I think he's a starter. He's got starter stuff. He he was a solid Friday night guy for us, and for whatever reason, he's become this utility pitcher. But my whole thing is you you've seen him now come in. I think three games, and he gets burnt. You can't use him the rest of the series. So if he is going to be a middle reliever or a closer, I would like to have him Friday and then maybe Sunday to do some cleanup too. But I just don't know with this Arkansas team, man. It's it's back and forth until we get some consistency back with Brady Tiger being that, you know, eight, nine inning guy that comes in, slams the door. I just I feel like you're gonna keep seeing Van Horn play with this lineup. But on the other side of it, Tennessee, Blake Burke, those guys can hit the ball. And I don't know their record and how good they're doing against lefties, but having Holland and Smith in there that that may be the key to winning this series. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you know, one, it was kind of weird. <clears throat> uh, so, Dollinger was a Saturday starter last year. So, it went Chase Burns, Ch- uh, or Drew Burns. Uh, yeah, Burns, Dollinger, and then Beam, right? And mm. then they they, yep. they flip-flop Burns and Dollinger. And, and I didn't understand why. Uh, because they were both so dominant in their roles, why change it? You know, if it's if it ain't broke, is the old adage. Um, Drew Beam right now is the only consistent pitcher they have. I mean, he's slicing and dicing on Sunday. I, I think that kind of stems from maybe a little less competition because most teams don't have three elite starters, so it almost makes him look a little better. Uh, but no, but nonetheless, like he is a solid pitcher. Really don't know much about this Andrew Lindsay. He didn't pitch last year. He played at Charlotte. He was six and two in 21 with them decent numbers getting his really first time big time sec start here it's kind of tough when you're looking on the other side of the mound and you got hunter holland um who's an ace he's been there before he's been there every series until tennessee wins a series in the sec right now uh against a, a competent top five team i mean I, I have to fade them until they prove me wrong again again i've said it dollander has been hit Kids are not scared of a 98-mile-an-hour fastball anymore. It's a regular thing. They're hitting that thing on the jugs, Monday through Friday, pregame. It's nothing. You got to have good stuff. He does have good stuff. Is it elite? I don't know. We're seeing teams with good hitters hit it. Peyton Stovall, step up, buddy. Brady Slavin, step up. Make those big hits because Florida did it and LSU did it. You're a top-five team in the country. It's your turn to do it. You're at home. There's no reason you can't. I'm taking Arkansas until they prove me wrong. They've been good to me in the uh, in the auto bet, Arkansas, Florida. I just hope it lasts another week against this Tennessee team on the road. And one thing, with when you start making changes, Vitalo's not going to say it. There's a little nervousness on that side. Things are a little yeah. dicey in that, lo- in that locker room and the dugout. So to have to make a change on the road, I think, could be a difference maker. So uh, we'll see. It'll be interesting. 
Yeah, and I I texted my buddy Kevin Bohannon. He's a he works for a sports radio show here in Arkansas, and he's a big baseball guy. He said, "I really don't think Vitello's playing games. I think he's doing his best to take two out of three. Dave Van Horn did it first, and now Vitello has followed suit. So I I think actually he's probably throwing game one." to try to take game two and three. So just be wary of that kind of it's a what you're match. looking at. Yeah. And, and even more so for this little rivalry. I mean, you've already got students camped out waiting to get into the hog pen tomorrow morning. And, you know, it, it's going to be an awesome atmosphere. I had tickets. I ended up giving them away. I, I can't go this weekend, but Man, I, I would love to be up there because you're going to hear a lot of hog calls and a lot of uh, a lot of shouting matches. I feel like between Vitello, Van Horn, and these umpires. Before we change real <coughs> quick, do you have an update on the Brady Tiger situation? What like where's he at? What's what's his turn? Of, you know, time frame. So originally, I'd heard that it was going to be six to eight weeks, which would be, I think, se- it's been seven weeks now since the injury. Is he throwing? or maybe six? I, I don't know if he is. Bohannon said that it's probably going to be the end of this month at best. So I, I feel like it's probably a little worse than they've let on. But I we just need him back. I mean, if we can get him back and and our record doesn't go from you know us being on the bubble of of even you know being able to host a regional, I think we'll be fine. But uh, if if we just get him back, it's going to benefit us tremendously. Yeah, I agree. So I noticed that I made a uh, I made a mistake. I'm sorry, it's the first one. But Stanford, no Blake Burke, Zane Denton, Griffin Merritt, they did not transfer to Stanford. I just forgot to update that whole side. So I will get that fixed when we post it. But let's talk about number eight, Stanford traveling to Oregon. We kind of touched on this a little earlier. Stanford probably gets this series win, but hats off to Jay Stoffel because they won 2-0 in a Pac-12 rock fight last weekend against Oregon State. That one did cost me some money, but I bounced back and, and hammered Oregon State the next two games. This may be one of the best pitching matchups in the Pac-12. Quinn Matthews taking on Jay Stoffel. This may be an underplay for me unless it's like, seven and a half, which I doubt it's going to be that. But these Pac-12 games, they just do not score a lot of runs. And I, and I feel like this could be a 3-1, 2-1 top game. All right. I'm going to I'm gonna make you do some extra work. So you got to correct that. I need you to – I don't know why I even told you, Oregon. Put me on Stanford. The games haven't started, so it's going to be a repost. I, I just – I don't know, man. I, even though I'm not high <laughs> – on Stanford, like I, I go back and forth, and I don't, I just this Oregon team, like, are they a top twenty-five team? I don't know, I, I don't know. I mean, they're a week twenty-two and nine. I'll say that. Uh, just go ahead and put me on Stanford. I, I got to slide with you. I just don't see how. Maybe they steal Friday, but I just don't see how you get past Matt Scott and Joey Dixon. I mean, the next guys. They're almost 70 RA. I just don't see it. Even though you're at home, I mean, that's bad. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, they're just not good. The fact that they were even in the top 25 last week, I know. That, that was like an auto fade against them. Just put me on and, Stanford. I, I'm changing <clears throat> sides. All right. Let's do it. Uh, stay, staying with the Oregon State Beavers, who did show up and, and take that series against Oregon, they host. Another mistake here. USC is not number eight. Gosh, what am I doing? Oh, but man. They, USC is number 25, I believe. They jumped in after Oregon fell out, which surprises me that Oregon State didn't get a little bit more love looking at USC's record 21 10 and 1. Any team that ends in a tie, they pretty much are worthless to me. So it's going to be an auto fade against USC. I think Oregon State takes this series, and they're back to playing a little bit better Beaver baseball. Yeah, I agree. Like I said earlier in the show, um, college baseball has has run its fair share over the last 15 years through Corvallis. 
And I think we're trending in that direction. I'm not saying we're headed for that. I think we're trending, though. Oregon State's, you know, Trent Sellers is, is one of the better <coughs> pitchers in the Pac-12. Jacob Kamatz, like, both of them were there last year. They have the experience. You get – you get Corvallis, it's one of the best stadiums. It's a small stadium, but that there's such loyal fans out there. I mean, you got USC. They haven't been good since the 60s. Uh, they used to be a powerhouse, and they just fell off. I just – as good as Oregon State's been of recent, I, I think they're going to win this series at home. I think it's just too much for USC to kind of walk in there. Um, I mean, they might – I look at their, you know, Caden Aoki – that might be their best opportunity because I just don't see Trent Sellers dropping it at home, even though uh, Tyler Stromsberg is four and one. Um, that Oregon State's starting to, to get uh, kind of in a good groove, so give me Oregon State there. Yep, I agree. Well, let's cover anything else that we didn't in those plays. Uh, I know you want to talk about your Florida Gators, but I think they end up getting the sweep this weekend. What else do you like on the board? And I know we don't have a board yet, so that's another thing. But yeah, it's we've kind got of, I mean, some time. It's uh, you said it. Florida's going to sweep the series. I mean, Georgia. I had them more so as a fade Kentucky last week, and then you know I actually bet them against Clemson, thinking, oh, you got a series win, you're staying at home, you got a little momentum, you just get punched in the mouth. I mean, that's just a bad team. Um, I don't know who in their right minds that they were going to be kind of a sleeper in the SEC because they're just getting stomped, and I, I don't see Florida stopping. Uh, the only interesting there for me is, uh, and I think anybody who has a, a deep interest in college baseball, you really got to tune in to <clears> Sunday, <throat> and you got to see if Caglino in one pitches, and two, does he kind of right the ship against just a bad SEC team to kind of reset the nerves, calm down, and get in a groove, uh, because I think that could influence a, a, a future um, and really change the direction of the team. Uh, so more from just a future standpoint, I, I want to see what he does as a fan and a, and a gambling person. So, Yeah, I think Florida is definitely going to be a parlay play for me, as well as Texas. Texas takes on Baylor. Baylor is awful at baseball, so you can pretty much guarantee Texas will sweep them, as well as Campbell. Actually, uh, man, I don't know if you can get. I don't know if you can guarantee Texas because. Oh, uh, that's true. At least down. guarantee Lucas Gordon. Okay, yeah. outside of Lucas Gordon, we'll yeah. we'll say that they should they should be a, a lock for that one. What about and then Oklahoma as well State? as Virginia? Can we? Can ah, we good team. Is that, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Oklahoma State. So Oklahoma State and West Virginia. West Virginia fell off the top twenty-five. I told Johnny two weekends ago he wanted to talk about West Virginia. I didn't look at him at all. Said I don't bet bad teams. They were in the top 25, and now they're not after dropping a series. I'm pretty sure they lost to Kansas. Didn't even know Kansas had a baseball team. So <laughs> that tells you what I think about West Virginia. I think Oklahoma State, they're one of those weird teams, man. they are I really thought that they would take the series against TCU and – I, you may have to correct me here. Didn't they lose one? They lo they lost the series. Yeah, they lost one the to two, right? Oklahoma yeah, okay. State did, yeah, yeah. They that those teams are just back and forth. They're like Jekyll and Hyde. You can't tell if they're going to be good or if they're bad. And I've got a future sticking on TCU and on winning the Big Twelve. And there for a while, I thought that was great. Then it was Oklahoma State. Now it may be TCU again. I don't know. I don't think Rock Riggio is going to let this team not be in the regional race. But I, at this point, I just can't bet them. I mean, I've got, I've lost. I feel like every time I've bet on them, I'm and I've lost when I, yeah, I've lost when I bet against them. Yeah, I, I'm right there with you. You fade them, and they. They win a game, and then you bounce with them, and they lose. It's the same with Texas outside of Lucas Court. I mean, you think Johnson's going to kind of stay in the shining light, and he lets you down, and then, you know, Texas Tech drops games. They probably shouldn't. Big 12 is just bad baseball, in my opinion, right now. They're just kind of beating themselves up, uh, almost like cannibalism down there, and I just can't get a read on it, man. I mean, good teams win series, and I, I would <clears> – <throat> I don't know if I can say like they're good teams because they don't win series. 
consistently. Yeah. All right, and they should they should beat West Virginia, but again, I I really thought that they, they would have beat beaten. Oral Roberts. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they're just not. I mean, they're not a good they're not a good team to bet on because you yeah. you they they have zero consistency, I guess, and that that's the same way with TCU. Yeah, I mean the only the only I'll give TCU some credit. They have some injuries. Yeah, Oklahoma State has. I don't. They have a couple, I guess, but I think they're starting to be a an auto stay away. I mean, it's really got to be a good spot for me. I think moving forward to bet on Oklahoma State, uh, Texas Tech, even Texas. I mean, if it's not a Friday matchup or Game One, if they're playing a Thursday series. I just I, I can't trust them. So I think you're gonna see my teams that I bet on kind of dwindle and, and and really kind of stick to who's winning. Yeah, and used to like Jerron Watts Brown when he pitched, that was an auto bet, kind of like Chris Flynn. And now they both get shelled. Like, what are we doing? Yeah. What are we doing? Zero consistency. I just I have to stay away from them. Uh wrapping up, man. Is there anything else that you're looking at? No, not right now. I mean, obviously, it's hard with these lines. One, the, the books, I mean, I'll just say it. They point blank suck, you know, at least DraftKings. Obviously, you have Bet Saracen, so you get a little better lines. Um, it's really hard to cap. I mean, you're, you're capping no overs, you know, no no run lines. You really have to pick and choose your lines. You know, tonight we had to lay minus 200 plus on LSU just to get a bet in. It's, it's crazy. It's it's what you have to do in the sport. Um Sometimes in a midweek, you can jump on that. I know it's a big bet, but LSU was an auto bet today. You cash a nice ticket. Just be careful on those Oklahoma State, TCU, Texas Tech teams. I mean, I'm finding the hard way. You know, you just can't trust them and um, get a couple futures in. I think it's going to be worth it, even if it's $10. I mean, 10 to win 150 is still not a bad deal. I'll take that any day of the week. Um, just follow us on College Baseball Insiders. You know, there's 139 followers. Those people, I mean, they're winning money. If you're not on the train, you, I mean, you're you're missing out. It just is what it is. Uh, follow at Grissom Tweets, at Cumilli, at uh, CBSB <coughs> Insiders. And, I mean, Patreon, everything. Follow us. You're, you're losing money. Nothing to bash the other people out there. I think we give the best information from a gambling perspective. I think we're – uh, the most consistent on that aspect. We're really focused, and, and uh, we win. We want to win for ourselves and win for the fans, and it's free, right? We don't charge anything. So take advantage, people. Grow the game. Take advantage. Well, and I definitely can't charge anything for these cards if I keep getting <laughs> information no. wrong. So I will get those corrected tonight and then get those posted on our Patreon and then our new website, collegebaseballinsiders.com. As Quentin said, you can check everything out there. Everything is free. I appreciate the two people that have paid $5 each on the Patreon account. However, you do not have to pay just to follow the page. You can access all the same posts, but I appreciate it. Uh, that wraps up the show. Again, I'm Matt Grissom. You can follow me at Grissom Tweets. That's Q Millie. And we appreciate the support, guys. Keep cashing tickets and, and grow the game with college baseball.